In this video, you're gonna see a super honest review of the early access version of Luminar Neo. It's Kylum's new editing software that uses artificial intelligence to help you with your edits. I'll show you the new features, if they actually work or not, how it handles light, dust spots, power lines, skin, skies, how it stacks the edits so that you can go back to it, the mobile sharing function, how fast it is, and also how much power it needs, how it compares against other editing softwares, and finally, who is it for? Yeah, I'm Manry, and in this channel, I help you with the tech tools to be creative. Today, we're gonna talk about Luminar Neo's early access version, to which I had access to to do some tests. But if you see a card up here or a link in the description, it means that the final version is out already, and there's already an updated video on this channel for you to check out. So I suggest you to go directly there. Just a disclaimer before we start, this is not a sponsored video. So every opinion here is my own from my own experience with the software. Since there are quite a lot of tests, I chopped up the video in many chapters. So you can skip around if you want to go directly to the part that interests you the most. Okay, so let's begin already with a quick tour around the software. And slowly I'm gonna be talking also about the differences between different versions of softwares and what's new about this one. So let's check it out. All right, so let's begin with a quick tour. Luminar Neo is kind of like a mix between Luminar 4 and Luminar AI. We're gonna see the differences a little bit. So I just imported this folder over here with a bunch of files and it's all a mix of types of files. There are RAWs from Sony, from Canon, there are JPEGs, TIFF files, there's DNG from DJI drones. On the left here, you can see the folders that are already inside the catalog, up here the catalog and the editing module. By the way, before you ask, this early access version doesn't have some of the AI functions that will be in the final release, but also doesn't have some of the basic functions such as histogram, dodge and burn, and syncing settings between photos. So this will be available in the final release, but it's not here right now, that's why you can see it. By the way, if you're interested just in knowing what's the difference between Luminar 4, AI, and Neo, you can access this page over here in the Skylums website. I'm gonna leave it in the description below also the link so that you can see exactly what differs between them. But mostly it's gonna be about layers and some of the AI functions. Okay, so let's get one shot as an example over here and I'm gonna choose one of these, like this one, for example. Now, as soon as you click it, you can see down here on the left, which camera took it, what was the lens, all the kinds of information that are embedded inside the raw file. And then we can go to the develop module by clicking edit up here. And now you're gonna see that there are all the basic editing functions here, just like develop in which you're gonna find all the kinds of exposure, smart contrast, highlight shadows, whites and blacks. You have the curves and you have also the RGB curves, so you can treat them channel by channel individually. You have some color controls over here for the white balance, saturation, vibrance. If you're using the Lightroom, this is nothing new for you. And it's got some controls also about sharpness, noise reduction, and also optics. Optics doesn't say clearly if there's a profile applied for your lens specifically, or if it's just guessing by the picture itself. And this is all inside a panel called Essentials, but also inside Essentials, we have some of the options here with this AI written on the right, which means that this, this is powered by artificial intelligence. And one of the cool ones is this Enhance, because this is practically like editing the picture by itself. If you get the accent and you just throw it up, you're gonna see that it messes up with the vibrance, with the contrast, and also with the whole luminosity of the scene, making it much more interesting. Can be a little bit too much if you overdo it, but it's a very quick way to get the picture to a very nice state already. Okay, so now I don't know if you noticed, but something interesting happened here. I'm just back to the enhanced panel and everything is back to zero, but I had changed it before. And the thing is that Luminar Neo stacks these changes in the edits panel, which is just up here on the right. So if I click here, actually you're gonna be able to see everything that I've done so far in the picture, including the enhance. And so here is the 54 that I had applied before. And as soon as I click on it, actually I'm seeing the picture now as it was in that moment. So whenever you wanna go back to an edit and dial it down or up a little bit or something like that, you can either stack a new one on top of it or you can come back to the edit and just reduce the effect from here. I'm still not sure if I like this way or if I prefer the Lightroom method in which I'm always seeing the changes that I've made, but I guess it depends only on getting used on this kind of workflow. Structure AI acts a lot on the sharpening of the picture using something similar to the clarity in Lightroom. Okay, so now let's go to this creative tab and 
Okay, so now let's go to this creative tab and play around a little bit with this relight AI. And this is a very cool function. It tries to understand the depth of the picture and allows you to play with the brightness near and far away. So let's go to an extreme. I'm just gonna get the brightness near and pull it up all the way. So you see that down here is getting much brighter. If I do brightness far, you're gonna be able to see that I'm playing around with what seems to be a bit farther away. But the cool thing here is, if I just go to the extremes, you're gonna be able to see that there's kind of like a border over here. And you can control this border with the depth slider. And if I go up, it's just uh, consider that I want this brightness of the near part going further away. And if I go back, it's gonna come back. But the cool thing is, this is not linear. So if I begin pushing up from here, you can see on the bottom left part that actually it's going up a little bit earlier than the right part because it's trying to cover for those trees over there. And then it begins to be a little bit more linear and then it finishes over there. Let me show you this with another picture in which this is even clearer. So let's do more or less the same. Brightness near, I'm just gonna pull it up all the way. And brightness far, I'm gonna pull it down. And now you can see very clearly that just this part over here is actually a bit brighter. But now, if I play with the depth, look at this. It goes totally over the coast before it even hits the ocean here on the left until I get over here. The masking is not perfect, as you can see, but also because we are going to the extremes here. I put the sliders all the way up and down. So if you do something a little bit more mild, kind of like this, you can really make what's the subject, what's in the foreground pop or the opposite. I mean, you can create separation with this in a really cool way. Now, using this to create separation is not useful only for landscape pictures, but also for portraits. So in this one, for example, it tries to understand what is the subject, and if you try to make it brighter a little bit, you can see that the foreground, but closer to the lens, is being brightened a little bit, and also the model. And now if I do the same, and with the brightness far, I just throw it down a little bit, you see how much separation from the background we managed to create. And now with this shot, I noticed that it's not really perfect, because it didn't do a very good job in between the hair, like over here, for example, but it's so small. And if you're not zooming in all the way to really pixel peep, and you're not exaggerating like I did here, it's gonna be totally unnoticeable. So I was actually quite happy with the results from Relight AI. Now the Sky AI is definitely a tool that generates a lot of discussion. Let me know in the comments if you're in favor or totally against it. But this is how it works. You just come up here, you select any kind of sky from the list that you have there available, and Luminar detects automatically the edges of your subject and tries to understand what is the sky. And it does a very, very good job. It looks like a perfectly possible sky for that day. And still you have many other controls over here to try to make it as perfect as possible. So you can tweak a little bit the horizon, so push it up and down. You can flip it around if you want, and you can make some other smaller adjustments here to try to close gaps, to relight the scene, defocus. So you can really tweak it really well, especially if you choose something a little bit more extreme, like for example, let's say I pick one of these. So you can still do a relighting on the scene to make it look possible because the colors and saturation of the foreground right now doesn't match at all what's on the back. So if I just go all the way with relight strength, you see how much it edges of magenta around here. And then you can see that it's not perfect. On the edges over here, you still have some of that light from the original shot. So definitely if you're going for a total transformation like this, you're gonna have much more trouble. All right, but the sky was really easy. Let's make it a little bit harder for Luminar and see what happens. Let's get this shot over here in which it has to cover for a lot of gaps in between the leaves. So as you can see in this one, for example, it covered really well this middle part and here, for example, but down here on the left, it really didn't do much but maybe this is a little bit too extreme and obviously it's not a possible sky for that day. So let's just try something different. And you can see that with this one, it totally matches and gives some texture to the background that looks really cool. So it is the same situation. It's not perfect if you wanna go too extreme, but if you wanna do something subtle like this, it works like a charm. And also I was quite impressed by pixel peeping a little bit at how well it did in between the leaves over here. Take a look at this. These clouds here, for example, didn't exist at all. So if I just do it like here, you're gonna see that it was just pure white and it added the blue and the whites over there in a very nice way. Also without adding a crazy amount of fringe around here. Okay, let's go back to this shot and I'm gonna show you the Atmosphere AI. And this is going to add some fog to the scene and you can see that it's still identifying what is the subject here on our right and adding the fog just kind of like behind it. 
but you can still impact the depth so that you can also have it a little bit closer to the lens over here. Let's see it before and after. Let's see now the two new functions that are related to erasing something on the picture. And the first one is about erasing power lines. To access these functions, you just have to come to erase and they're gonna be down here inside objects removal. And here you have remove power lines. It does a very okay job, but misses a lot of the power lines. I notice that the more out of focus they are, the more difficult it is for the software to understand them. And also if they are in between objects, like here, for example, it also doesn't understand it really, really clearly. But the thing is, you can use the remove power lines function first and then come up with the erase and just finish erasing whatever you want by passing the mouse over here like this. And then it does a pretty good job at it. So the same as before, let me show you some more extreme examples. You can see that it left some dust over here, but it's just the same. You can just pass the mouse over there and bingo. And this one is interesting because it shows that it also tries to remove the power lines that are in front of the buildings over here. But as you see, it can be a little bit sloppy. So I would recommend using this function if you have a clear background like the two pictures before and then just finishing it off with the razor tool. Okay, so now let me show you a real picture that I took and that probably is the best case scenario for this kind of tool, which is just clicking the remove power lines again and it's very clear against the background what they are, but still we would take some time to remove them properly and it does a perfect job. There's just one tiny piece over here that it didn't get that you can just choose to erase and it's gonna be really fast and it's perfect job. Okay, let me show you now the second AI object removal tool that actually impressed me a lot. I have this very, very dirty sensor shot over here for, for which I desperately need to remove some dust. So I can just come to erase, same place here, just remove dust spots. And you're gonna see that in a second, it's going to analyze everything that I have on the picture. And even these ones over here are going to be erased also. And that's it, really, really good job. Now, these AI functions do take a little bit more time, maybe 30 seconds or so, but it's totally worth it because probably I would spend much more than that to clean it up like it did. Now, just a couple of extra options we have down here in the Creative tab are the sun rays, for example, in which you can just place where the sun is going to be and add some flare or some ray lights that actually, if you don't overdo, can look really, really cool. And you can change a lot of things like the sun radius and how much it's gonna glow. There are also some other options over here. You can just come to dramatic and it's going to add a lot of contrast, more characteristic to the picture. And you, or you can come to mood, for example, and, and choose one specific LUT for the picture. And also tweak how much of it do you want. There is toning. Mystica is gonna help you do everything a little bit more glowy and smooth. Glow is actually going to act only on the glow and do something like this. And film grain, well, it's obvious. Okay, quickly on to portraits. Okay, so first thing we got is the portrait bouquet. And if you just hover the mouse over the picture, you're gonna see that Luminar already selected the subject for you. And if you increase the amount, the background is just gonna go even more out of focus than it was in the beginning. Let me show you the difference before and after. Now, if you notice well, it did eat away a little bit of the head on the top and the hair, but still it looks just fine. We also got skin AI in which you can try to smooth in the skin a little bit. And I'm just gonna go to the extreme here. And I was quite pleased with the result from this one because even going to the extreme, you can see that it's, it does take some time to refresh the screen. Working with Luminary is not right away seeing the result of what you're applying. You definitely have to wait for some seconds before you can continue, especially if you're zooming in and out frequently. So regarding user experience, I definitely hope that in the final version, it gets a little bit faster than it is right now. So let me show you here the before and the after. All right, quite good. Let me show you one other shot. Now this one is really interesting because despite selecting really well the subject, apart from this tip of the shoe over here, it's trying to blur something that doesn't match with what should happen actually. So this is a case in which you definitely have to play a little bit with the depth correction over here so that it actually affects the whole background or a little bit more. So we're gonna have to zoom in to correct this mask over here. And if you just begin painting around the shoe, you're gonna begin to be able to see the red mask over it. And also that the area affected is not exactly the area of the circle you see on the screen. So you definitely have to pay attention to that before doing something. Now I'm just gonna grab the defocus and take away a little bit this over here. 
and that's fine. Okay, so now you have a much shallower depth of field than before. And still the mapping is not perfect, but definitely this can help in many, many situations. Okay, and below here there are two more tools that I didn't talk about yet, which are the Super Contrast, in which you can deal with the contrast in different zones of luminosity, like on the highlights, only on the mid-tones. They kind of overlap each other a little bit, so that you have something a little bit smoother. And last but not least, we have Color Harmony over here, which is kind of like the color grading on Lightroom, in which you can add colors to different parts of luminosity. So for example, you can choose shadows over here and you can add a little bit of cyan to the shadows, for example. And then you can pick the highlights and maybe add a little bit more of yellow or inside the mid-tones here and create a little bit of color separation using these. So you can definitely be creative with this one. Now, for those that are into landscape photography, I imported some of these lake shots here in the hopes of doing some HDR and stitching some panoramas, but this is not possible inside Luminar Neo. HDRs are being taken care of by Aurora HDR, which is also software from Skylum. It's a request that has been made in their forums and everywhere for a long time already, but still it's not going to be implemented in this software. Okay, so if your edits are over, we can already export some of the pictures. And I'm gonna do five of them that we worked today here. And they have quite a lot of changes, but I want to see how long is it going to take to export all of these five. I'm just going to choose the folder over here, JPEG, 100% quality, actual size, just leave it as it is and export. And let's count beginning now. Now I'm going to export all these five files again, but without anything else running in the computer besides Luminar Neo. Started. So it definitely seems that it goes a little bit heavier on the CPU than on the graphics card itself. All right, it's over and it took this amount of time. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a comparison between Luminar Neo and Lightroom in how fast can they export the same files with just some very basic contrast and luminosity changes, the same ones. All right, so starting on Luminar, let's do it. When exported, this is over. Okay, let's go to Lightroom. Let's do it in three, two, one, go. Oh, it's over. <laughs> okay, this wasn't very fair. Okay, so Lightroom took this amount of time and Luminar Neo took this amount of time. Okay, so now one last feature that I wanna show you is the Luminar Share, in which you can choose whatever picture you want from around here, let's say this one, for example. You can just go to Luminar, File, Share, and there's gonna be Luminar Share over here. And now you're gonna see on the screen this QR code that you can use by just opening the app on your phone and you're gonna have scan QR code right here in the first screen. I'm just going to scan it and now it says connected. And actually this is a bit strange because I had already said to share that photo, but it uses it actually to make the first connection. Then I have to go here again, Luminar, File, Share. And now the next time that I do it, it's gonna understand that it's already connected. It's gonna say exporting image and it's gonna send it directly to the phone. And that's it. It's already available over here. I can already see the image and I can share it again if I want to do so. The only thing that I found a little bit strange is that the resolution of the photo that arrives here is not the same one from the raw file. For example, this other photo that I shared before was a 6000 by 4000 on the computer and it arrived here as a 3840 by 2560. Okay, so now that we tested everything that we could with this version, what about the price? Well, right now, if you go to Skylum's website to check the price of Luminar Neo, you're gonna see that it's in a pre-release price yet, with a little bit of a discount, especially if you use the link in the description. You're also gonna see that there are two packages available, one only with Luminar Neo, and another one with an extra discount for you to get a bundle with Luminar AI, which actually I don't see much reason to do since the differences are so small, and all the good things from Luminar AI are being incorporated also in this new version. So I would probably go just for Luminar Neo unless you have a very good reason for something specific you use that is only available in Luminar AI. The link is in the description and like this you can do the comparison by yourself. Quick insider tip here for you, if you just wait around the checkout page a little bit, a pop-up is gonna come and it's gonna offer you two installments instead of a one-time payment. So if you prefer to do like that, just wait around a little bit and it's gonna come. Okay, so is it worth it or not? Well, I think if you're using free software right now, jumping to Luminar Neo is gonna be a big step. And not only because of all the artificial intelligence cool stuff that is incorporated in the software, but also because of all the small, simpler, but necessary tools that you can have that are all present there. 
and that sometimes with free software, it's difficult to find in only one piece of software. And within this, I include the RGB curves, denoising, many different kinds of sharpening tools. Now, do I recommend buying it right now? Actually, yes, because the pre-release price is a very good offer, and you also have a 30-day money-back guarantee from Skylum. So if you get it right now, you can already begin testing the early access version, and as soon as the final version comes out, you can test all the new features and see if it really fits you or not. And in case you think it's not, you can just activate the money back policy. Now, what if you're a user that already has a subscription for the Adobe package or maybe to capture one, for example? Then I don't think so unless you want to escape the subscription mode or you want to save some money because after all, buying Luminar is going to cost you about four or five months of the subscription, so it's much cheaper. But these other options are much better at organizing your files, power of editing and flexibility. So it kind of depends also at which level you are. So to sum it up, if you're starting out right now and you never used an editing software, I would recommend you to go with the free options available, such as Capture One Express, for example, that you can find in this video over here. And if it's something that you're enjoying, upgrading to Luminar is gonna be a very nice step for you. Now, if you're serious about it or you have actually professional work to do and deliver, I think the Adobe Package and Capture One are better options for you. All right, guys, I hope this helped and stay tuned for the official launch. Subscribe to the channel so that you receive a notification as soon as the new video about the final version comes out in which we're gonna retest everything that we did here today, but also we're gonna test all the new features that are gonna be available only when the final version comes. And if you don't follow me on Instagram and Twitter, do so. Like this, you can see the backstage of the production of these videos and some other tips that I share apart from the YouTube videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Hey, I'm back. Just wanted to thank you again for watching and to tell you that YouTube knows you so well that they are recommending this video here for you to watch. I don't know what it is, but they know you very well and I think it's probably good. So I'll see you in that video. Ciao. Thank you.